Hello and welcome to Not Just Books, the monthly television show about your Williamson County Public Library and our wonderful community. I am Dolores Greenwald, the director of the library, and we have some exciting news to announce today, so don't miss a minute of our program. In our Your World segment, we'll be talking with Bill Peach about the literary community here in Williamson County. Bill has been a friend of writers and the library for many years. In our What's Hot in Books segment, I'll be joined by Bill Peach and Michael Tucker. I'm excited to tell the viewers that during this portion of the program, we'll be announcing the Williamson County Public Library's first ever Janice Keck Literary Award winners. In our Save the Date portion of the show, we'll be talking with Steve Gunthrie, JD, Vice President, Community Impact of the United Way of Williamson County. And he'll be talking about the upcoming family Family Fun Fair. Thank you for joining us today. We have a jam-packed show, so let's get to it. We'll be right back with our Your World segment. back. In our Your World segment, we have had the privilege in the past to be talking to some real uh, movers and shakers in the Williamson County community, and we're fortunate again to have one today. His name is Bill Peach. Um, thank you, Bill, for joining us today. And we're going to be talking about the writing uh, community here in Williamson County. But Bill, how did you get started with uh, writing? Long story. Um, in 1964, I wrote a controversial letter to the editor. Ah. And I learned that I could make people angry and I could develop readers. And from that, I set out on a long mission. The pen can be mighty. It can. <laughs> and that led you. Now, how long have you been in Williamson County? Are you born and raised here? or? My joke is that I was bo I was brought into the county kicking and screaming. Okay. I was delivered on a farm in Boston, Tennessee. Okay. okay. And um, there's a lot of things going on here in the uh, writing community in Williamson County. Tell us about the author's circle. It was sort of a recovery project, I guess, following the Council for the Written Word, which made a great contribution to the library and to the literary community. But when it closed several years ago, I tried to reach out to the previous members and anybody that I knew of who had written and published a book and aspiring writers. And with that previous organization and the library, we found and located a, an amazing list of almost 450 Williamson County authors who have written and published a book. That's that's wonderful. And what are some of the main ways you communicate with the uh, circle? All right, we have a Facebook page of 313 members. Of that group, about 130 are local and active. We do book signings at the Southern Festival of Books, at the library, at the Main Street Festival, and we also meet twice a month. And most of it is networking and bonding, but a lot of it is instructional and educational. What are some of the needs in the literary community in Williamson County? Uh, I guess I'll go back to the motto, uh, encourage, educate, and empower. Mm -hmm. I think that sums it up. Almost everybody has a story in their head that could be a book, and they just need to know how to write, uh, how to edit, how to publish, and how to promote. Um, 
what do you think is the next step for the author circle? Um, I have for many years been a part of the Southern Festival of Books and I can envision somewhere down the road uh, I don't know through what aegis but something very similar to that in Franklin Tennessee I, I think we have uh, an expansive literary community that can do that and it may be that author circle may be um, what drives that when um now, when again do you guys meet? When do y'all meet? All right. Currently, we're meeting at the coffee house at Second and Bridge. Now, if you ask me where it is, it's at the corner of Second and Bridge. <laughs> but uh, we meet the second and fourth Thursday of every month. We meet at six, and uh, we usually eat and have informal conversation, and then usually some instructional program. Um, and we also have started participating in the uh, First Friday Downtown Franklin Art Crawl, mm -hmm. which we do at Meredith's from 6 to 9 every first, thir every first Friday. Now, not all of the people in your circle have published, correct? Is that correct? Uh, right. Um, of course, book signings is one thing, but, but a lot of the meetings is for encouragement. I think, and, and also we sort of tell our stories, which I think encourages people to decide where they are within that uh, sequence. And that can be a tremendous help, because we're working with, the library's working with someone right now that has wor uh, written a biography on General Adams that has to do with the Battle of Franklin. and. It's been 20 years he spent writing this. So it's good, I think, to have that empowerment, as you said, to encourage people to plug along and, and write and finish up their, finish their dreams. I grew up thinking that all authors were dead. <laughs> you know, and, and it was a, a great realization, I guess, to have uh, walk the earth. I'm with, so glad that's not true. <laughs> you know, to have walked the earth with Will Campbell and John Edgerton <laughs> and to have been able to rub elbows with, uh, in fact, I counted the other day, I think among my Facebook friends, 129 have written and published a book. That's, that's amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing. Um, and if somebody wants to know more about your author circle or get involved, how can they contact you? Um, I guess the first thing would be to look for me on the Facebook. But our page is author circle dash mid tn, uh, and that will. And if you are in any way an aspiring writer, uh, send a request. Uh, to the page and we'll take you in and make you part of the group. Well, thank you so much for being here. And if you are an aspiring writer, this is truly a great uh, venue for you to get involved in the literary community here in Williamson County. Thank you so much for joining us thank today. You. And we'll be right back. Shell shock, psychoneuroses, battle fatigue, PTSD. So far as combat is concerned, I think the stress is going to be the same in any kind of a war. I think it takes strength to recognize that you need help and to get the help. Ask your squad leader, platoon leader, platoon sergeant for help. You get shot up, you don't hesitate about going for treatment. A lot of times you can be wounded in your mind. There's nothing wrong by bringing that to other people's attention and asking for help. Tinnitus is a ringing in your ears that won't stop. It's always there. It won't go away. 
What causes tinnitus? Being exposed to loud sounds for extended periods of time, like at a concert, sporting event, or listening to your MP3 player at excessive levels. Why does it matter to you? Because teenagers are 30% more likely to develop noise-induced hearing loss. And it all could be prevented with one of these. It is so simple. Don't let it happen to you. Welcome back. In our What's Hot in Books segment, I am very happy to uh, welcome Michael Tucker and welcome back Bill Peach from our previous segment. Uh, we're going to be announcing the Janice Keck Literary Awards uh, winners, and it's a very uh, exciting time. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank today. you for the invite. Um, why did the library have these awards? Mike was involved in that part of the process. Well, there, it, it felt that there was a recognition needed for the writers in uh, uh, Williamson County. There's an extraordinarily large number of very talented writers, but also we wanted to have a way of of recognizing Janice Keck and the contribution that she made to the library. So it, the two of those things just sort of fell into place. And it also helped push the fact that the library is assisting authors in new and exciting ways. That was basically what the reward or award was going to be was a, a step in publishing, uh, granting the use of the imprint Academy Press, uh, which the library has uh, adopted, and, uh, and then cover the initial um, publication of the book. And we took submissions through, we started in February. We really wanted to start a little earlier th during the year, but we had some issues to iron out some details because this was the first time the library had done this. So we started in February and went through the end of March. and We actually extended it. We were a little bit concerned uh, for a while. The initial uh, submissions that came in to be reviewed and, and we really didn't get a whole lot and uh, we were we felt that uh, we were missing some of the talent that was mm -hmm. out there. And I think the, the decision that you made to extend it was really the right one. And in that extended period, we got some very high quality uh, submissions. That They're at the very, at the very end yeah. too, which was interesting. Altogether, we had 47 submissions. And I think that that was a surprise to those of us working on this project because I was honestly expecting half about half that. So to have 47 is submissions on a first event pro, uh, event like this is really exciting. Um, and we did receive some quality submissions. We had a very diligent and uh, knowledgeable volunteer staff uh, or volunteer group, not staff from the Williamson County Library, but a volunteer staff to help us. And it was Mike was one of them, Ginger Manley, uh, Nancy Fletcher Bloom, Louise Collin, and Sally Lee. And if you know the literary community in Williamson County, most of the folks are going to know, be familiar with those names. Uh, they're very active. Um, what did you, what do you think was the best part of the process? Well, it, it was seeing, I guess for us as judges, was how uniform we came uh, in, in arriving at the decisions. There was really very little conflict when it got to the point of who the winners were in this contest. Uh, the cream really did rise to the top, and uh, it was pretty, pretty close to unanimous sorts of decisions. Um, poetry was maybe the most interesting category to, to review. Um, all of the poetry submissions were outstanding. And uh, it, it was a little concern as I looked at them as an individual of, gee, you know, are, are the poetry selections that I rate highest, is that going to be 
uh, you know, an outlier. And it turned out that all five of us in judging those uh, were right up there. And uh, all of us were really impressed with that uh, poetry collection. This, this county has a collection of fine poets. Uh, so kind of segueing into that, Bill, what do you think is uh, the impact of this award to the literary community here? One of the things that impressed me was the diversity of the genre that we had uh, different categories because our writers community is so diverse. When I ask people, what do you write? I hear a, a whole new category. Mm -hmm. um, and I also have had some writers tell me that they didn't have anything ready to submit this time because it kind of took them by surprise. But they're going to submit next year. Uh, and we're going to continue to make this an, uh, an annual event. Um, one of the reasons that Bill is here is that we will have uh, an award ceremony with the winners and the participants. And he's been generous enough to MC for us. Um, so I'm very excited about, about these awards. I'm very excited that the library had the opportunity to do this. Uh, and thanks so much for the volunteers that put, helped put this together because if it wasn't for their diligence, <laughs> it wouldn't have happened. Uh, and I think next year we'll probably increase our volunteer pool of readers because it was, it, it was a lot of reading for you guys. You want to talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah, you, you know, you're talking about 47 pieces that were submitted. Uh, the, some of the collections were easiest to get through were, were the poetry because there were about 20 some pages. But when you looked at the novels, the nonfiction uh, work, as well as the, uh, I'm sorry, the fiction, as well mm -hmm. as the nonfiction, uh, you were looking at um, two to 400 pages of, of work. and. Um, you wanted to, to, in fairness, read it from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it was a very time-consuming project. But at the same time, as a reader, it was a lot of fun. In the nonfiction, I was reading about things I never would have thought to read mm -hmm. to begin with. Um, and, and the fiction uh, took me into some different categories and different areas that I would normally not go to. And I, I really enjoyed reading them. Well, let's not prolong the suspense any longer. Bill, would you announce our winners? We had four categories, fiction, nonfiction, poetry, and children's. And the awards go to, in fiction, John Davis for Bear Shadow, in nonfiction, to Brad Hoover for Tear, <coughs> excuse me, Tears of Hope, Hero in a Bandana. In poetry, the award goes to Sandy Coomer for, I love this title, The Presence of Absence. Mm -hmm. That is a good title. The Children's Picture Book, the award goes to Gene Simmons for Willie the Panther, Cat. Great selection. Good Thank you good so decisions. much. Thank you so much. And Thanks, Mike, and the other volunteers that helped put this together. And thanks for everyone that submitted. I appreciate the efforts. And congratulations to the winners. And we will do this again next year. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. When sharing the road, reaction time is important. Motorists should reduce their speed and avoid tailgating, especially in bad weather. When passing, they should leave at least three feet between their vehicle and the cyclist. Cyclists have the same rights and responsibilities as motorists. They should travel in the same direction on the right hand of the road and obey all traffic signals. 
Responsible cyclists care about the image they portray and are courteous to others with whom they share the road. Oh. Staying alert, sharing the road, and obeying traffic signals. Observing these rules provides predictability for both motorists and cyclists. Remember, same roads, same rules, same rights. Welcome back. In our Save the Date segment, I'm pleased to have Steve Gunthrie, Vice President of Community Impact with the United Way of Williamson County. Um, Steve and I will be talking about an event that's actually on the 20th. So if you're watching this on the original air date of the 19th, uh, you'll be able to uh, come and join us. So Steve, thank you for joining it us is today. It's my pleasure. Always good to see you. Good to see you too. Uh -huh. T tell the folks about the Family Fun Fair. Well, the Family Fun Fair is, a, uh, is our version of the uh, Day of Action, United Way Day of Action, which is nationwide. And what we do is get uh, children and whoever wants to attend to come in and our basic uh, premise is centered around reading, early uh, childhood reading, but we also have many booths set up for people who want to come in and volunteer for our different programs. And we have refreshments and we have uh, free popcorn. And uh, I think the best thing is about the program is it really gets these kids off to a good start with their learning from third grade. And uh, besides the start in learning, why is it important? Why is the Day of Action important? Well, it's to mo it's really to help us mobilize volunteers. And I guess as an, as an example, some of our programs might have two or three individuals who are actually uh, paid for their services, and then they bring in 20 or 30 more who are not. So you can imagine the money that they really contribute to our programs just by being a volunteer. And our volunteers, we train our volunteers very well and they seem, uh, they get to uh, apply for and volunteer for the programs they want to be involved with. So it's, uh, it's really a day of action to bring together and to mobilize volunteers across the, our county as well. And you have some dedicated volunteers. Yes, we do. Because we work with you, the library works with the United Way during the tax season. Yes. So talk about some of the things that the volunteers can do. Well, we have them, uh, you mentioned tax season, and we, had, we uh, had a growth in our number of volunteers from 17 to about 28 this past year for our VITA services, which is uh, filing income tax, uh, free income tax for individuals and families who make below a certain income, 57000 a year. And uh, we continually seek volunteers for that. So that's our finance program, our VITA program, the income tax. We also have our um, uh, Raise Your Hand tutoring and mentor program, which uh, we need volunteers to, to uh, volunteer about an hour after work, hour after school every day to tutor and mentor third and fourth graders in Williamson County and Franklin Special School District. Now, if they volunteered for that, mm -hmm. would they actually go to the school during that time or? Yes, they do. They go to school during that time, and uh, the only qu the only thing that they have to do is go through a background check with us, mm -hmm. and uh, we also train them as to what they do. And basically, they're assigned a uh, a school teacher, and there's two volunteers per teacher, and they go through the curriculum that the teacher has set out. And the good thing about this program so far, and it's been in, in uh, I guess it's been in the schools for about two years now, is when the when the volunteers do go and get involved with the schools, they become mentors to these kids and develop a good long relationship mm -hmm. with the kids. And this year we're looking at starting a long-term longitudinal study on just how effective our program is at changing the way these kids are uh, behaviorally and scholastically at the end of eight to 10 years. Now, what age groups do you have this program for what age school uh, grades and grades school? right now is third <coughs> and fourth grade third and fourth grade and we're we always at the end of the year of course uh, we do these programs in conjunction with the school systems with uh, uh, Dr. Looney and Dr. Snowden as well so at the end of the year we go back and assess how we've done and what we've taught and, and check the improvement and from year to year if there's anything we feel like needs to be added or the schools feel mm -hmm. like need to be added they certainly add them and we continue to support the program. Um, going back to the Day of Action, mm -hmm. um, you, you're going to be located at our main library. Yes, that's right. In Franklin. 
And then you're going to have another location in right Fairview. in Fairview. Mm -hmm. At where is it going to be in Fairview? It's at the. Uh, it was at the library there, and now it's going to be at the center, of uh, the agricultural center there, from what I understand. Well, you have a little bit more room. Yeah, we have more room there. Mm -hmm. And in order to uh, get the exact time of what's going on at both locations and the and the exact um, address for both locations, you just go to our website. Uh, uwwc.org and that'll tell you what's going on each day and what's happening how that day is broken down into what's going on. Now this will actually be the second year that we have done the uh, family yeah. fun fair. Yes. And the kids and you liked it too. Oh, yeah, what was the favorite part of it last year? I think it was uh, uh, the science guy. <laughs> Mr. Bond the science guy where we had, well, of course, we had about 400 people last year, which uh -huh. is a great increase over the year before. But I think the, uh, the, top, uh, the top choice of the kids was the science guy. So uh, we invite everybody to come out. And if you haven't seen him, and a lot of people have, but if you haven't, he's a, he's a tremendous guy to watch. And, and probably the second on the list would be the toucher trucks. Oh, yeah, exactly. And I don't know how I forgot that. But, <laughs> you know, the toucher trucks are huge because it's the first thing people see when they come in. And uh, of course, we had a, a portable jail uh, also drive up, uh, which uh, in which you were in prison for a while. Uh -huh. yeah, but uh, yeah. that was a great <laughs> event for, for the Touch of Truck and the uh, Mr. Bond Sass guy. Now, and nice. the Touch of Trucks are coming back. Yes, this, they are. This year on the twentieth. So. Um, and Mr. Bond Science guy is going to be there Bond again. Mr. Bond Science guy. And we're going to have reading. Yes. As well, individual reading to the children's. Some mm -hmm. of the volunteers will be doing readings. Yes. And uh, so come and join us for the United Way Absolutely. Family Fun Fair. And what is United Way's website? UWWC.org. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for joining You're us very today. Welcome. And we'll be right back. Where can I find out about the Venus fly trap? Where can I research information on my business competitors? What is the safety record on the car I want? Where can I research careers? Where? where? I'm all shook up. The Tennessee Electronic Library. That's where. And it's free to everyone in our state. Now go to your public library and, and find out how you can log on and, and get your password to a world of information just for living in our state. Well, you can probably even figure out the password just by listening to my voice. Hey. I'm all shook up. Welcome back to Not Just Books. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the show and will join us again soon. And I'd like to thank my very special guest, Bill Peach, Mike Tucker, Steve Gunthry, Vice President of Community Impact United Way of Williamson County. If you have any comments or suggestions for future programs, please contact me. The email address is Not Just Books at williamson-tn.org. We're doing some very exciting things here in Williamson County and you don't want to miss it. Also, remember our summer reading program which is going on now, enroll and win prizes. There is more information on our website, wcpltn.org. You can also leave comments about the show. Until next time, explore your world and read. Recycling bin. Let's go. There it is. Hey, if we're not recycled, everybody loses. That's right. Landfills are very expensive, and recycling saves resources and protects the environment. So what are we waiting for? Oh, we're